Welcome back, Simpson College, the Simpsons first ever student run award winning media broadcast. I'm Aaron Wilkins. And I'm Sam Hine. And coming up in this week, we have an update on the Shark Tank event from last week. Then we have a light humor feature. And flipping over to sports, we have softball highlights. For our first story this week, there was a drag show here on campus last week, and we had an overview of it. Let's check it out. The Simpson College Drag Show, an annual event hosted by Simpson College Pride Student Group, has become a vibrant tradition that celebrates diversity and inclusion. This event showcases a mix of local and student talent, providing a platform for both understanding and expressing various lifestyles in a safe and accepting environment. It has grown not just to be a performance, but an educational community building experience for the students, faculty, and broader community. In recent years, the drag show has seen significant participants and support. For instance, the 2023 show marked a post-COVID return with an impressive lineup that included both student performers and professional drag artists. The event featured performances that ranged from high-energy dance numbers to lip-sync battles, all aimed at raising funds for the Iowa Trans Mutual Aid Fund, which supports the trans and non-binary community in Iowa. The atmosphere was inclusive and supportive with measures in place to ensure all attendees felt comfortable participating at their own comfort levels. The annual drag show at Simpson College not only provided entertainment, but also serves a critical platform for adversity, raising awareness on important issues facing the LGBTQ community. It encourages dialogue, fosters acceptance, and celebrates the diversity of identities and expressions within college and the wider community. Well, it looked like everybody had a great time at the drag show. Absolutely. Now going on to our next story. If you guys watched last week, we know that Simpson had a Shark Tank event last week. Mike has a story on the updated results. Let's take a look. This week, if it looks familiar, it's because it is. We're doing a recap on how the pitch competition went, who placed, and what the prizes were. Let's check it out. My name is Chris. I'm a junior at Simpson College, and I'm the recruiter for the CEO club. No, this, the pitch competition went really great. We had about 10, 10 or so uh, groups contest, uh, competing. And our third place was Max Robinson, second place, Autumn Flory, and me and Mike, of course, took first. We also had an audience choice, and the audience choice was Maddie. She's actually the president of our CEO club right now, and her business idea was an app that actually helped you, like, pick out your fashion and your daily wearing and figure out just your style overall. I'm Max Robinson. I'm a junior, and I'm a part of the CEO club here. The pitch competition went well. Jesse Pladson and I placed third, and we received 50 bucks for that. We don't know exactly what we're going to use that money for yet, but we have a bit of a fund going, and we're going to figure out what tools and things that we can take away from that in order to benefit us. Um, it was an interesting experience up there. I haven't done a whole lot of public speaking in my life, but it's good to get some more of that, especially going down the path that I think I'll go down. The business I created is called Universal Athletics. It's a three-branch system attempting to get people in our society more active through advanced athletics, which is for those wanting to be the best in their sport, active athletics for those wanting to be more active in the community, and accessible athletics is for those who are facing challenges, uh, whether it's neurodiversely or physically, in order to get involved in sports. So if anyone's interested in the CEO club and you want to get involved in the pitch competition, you don't have to be a part of the CEO club, but it'll definitely help. We meet 210 to 310, like Mike said earlier, and yeah. Okay. If you thought that was all super interesting, you guys can get involved by joining CEO. They meet every Wednesday from 210 to 310. I hope that was all super interesting. This is Mike with SCTV. Well, congratulations to our very own reporter, Mike, on winning the money. Yeah, very well deserved. For our next story, we know we like it. Maybe you like it too. Our light and humor piece, Claire Barron, has a story. Oh, we're like ready to go. <laughs> and let me tell you how much I care. I didn't think this through. Da, da, da. <laughs> She's widowy widowing. <laughs> That's fine. What can I say? I'm a natural thruster. No. Oh, and I will do my darndest. Kind of cute. Great. Hey. 
Let me just. Uh, uh, uh. I find that man so sexy. I find him very attractive. Oh! Oh, nuts. Hey, can we get a go, Huskies? <laughs> Very well done, Claire. Absolutely. Now heading over to some people's favorite segment, sports. For this week, we only have one highlight video for you guys. This team has been scorching the competition lately. That is our women's softball team. Our Maddie Hayes has the highlights from this past weekend. Let me show you my Simpson softball this past week continued their role as they played BV here at home. In game one, Simpson tallied eight runs where BV scored just one. The storm started off strong with freshman McKenzie James hitting a two-run RBI single, giving the storm a 2-0 lead just after the first inning. Then the storm exploded in the third inning with Jenna Norris putting a ball in play that forced the Beavers starting pitcher to commit an error. They ended up scoring five runs in this inning and then had a solo in the fifth. In game two, Simpson made it a quickie as they scored 11 runs and BV just won, ending the game in five innings. In the first inning, the Storm scored a total of eight runs on seven hits with five straight batters driving in a run on the inning. The momentum didn't stop there as in the second inning, the Storm added three more runs. During this second game, Alexis Eulers joined the Simpson 100 hit club and Megan Hollenbauer smashed her second home run of the season. And bang, there it is. After the storm sweep of the Beavers, they are now on a 14 game win streak. The ladies next matchup is Dubuque on Saturday where they hope to continue their win streak. For SCTV, I'm Maddie Hayes. It looks like that was another dominant performance from the softball team. Absolutely, let's go take a look at our teams on the road. Looking at our teams on the road, our men's baseball team beat Nebraska Wesleyan 13-6, our men's tennis lost to Buena Vista 7-2, our men's golf team got 30th out of 37, and then our men's baseball team went 0-3 against Dubuque. Great job to all those teams this week, and good luck to them next week. Now it's time for the man of the hour. You know him, you love him, your meteorologist, Trey Teske. Ah, good evening, Simpson College. Let's take a look at our seven-day local forecast. Starting with the weather, it looks like the temperatures will continue to rise this weekend as we reach a high of 83. Next week, we'll see a little bit of showers maybe on Monday and Tuesday, but other than that, the clouds will be gone and the sun is awake, ladies and gentlemen. It is almost summertime. Now let's look at our sports. This weekend on Friday and Saturday, we've got baseball playing host to Loris, and next Wednesday, we've got men's tennis playing host to Nebraska Wesland. Roll Storm, back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Trey. Wow, that weather this weekend looks so nice. And if you like spike ball, comment below to play Aaron and I in spike ball. And that's going to do it for us this week. For SCTV, I'm Aaron Wilkins. And I'm Sam Hyde.